For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon, that is, Carl Pilkington. All right. The idea of Englishness and England, it's quite a vague term, isn't it? It's, you can play loose and fast with it. I mean, for instance, I was uh, looking at some quotes about England and John Major, former Prime Minister, he typified England as being a place of long shadows on county cricket grounds, warm beer, invincible green suburbs, dog lovers and old maids bicycling through the morning mist. Very yeah. specific vision of England. But he never came to the estate that <laughs> I was born on, sure. or Carl was born, you know what I mean? So, what is your typical image of an Englishman? Now? If I had to draw it for an alien, yeah. um, he'd be uh, quite squat, um, quite sturdy, sort of no neck, um, hairy. Are you just thinking of yourself? Do you know what? I, it, it would be my build with Carl's head. Really? And no neck, yeah. I think he's sort of balding and unshaven, and uh, he's like a shaved caveman. I think he's he's tough, he'd have tats, he'd, he'd eat like a dog. It's the bulldog breed. It is the bulldog breed. I am thinking of the bulldog breed, yeah. See, now my image of an Englishman is, is essentially that cliched one. It is, I think, f Hugh Grant. So you're modern, you're straight well, away modern or, now. I would say it's either mixed between Hugh Grant and Roger Moore when he was James Bond. You see, you know that's I mean? another that's another small percentage of I Englishness that sort of annoys me. Those people that think they're James Bond, they think they can buy a suit and read GQ, and they're suave and sophisticated, and they get cars they can't afford. All they do is work in a bank, come home, and flick through GQ at the adverts, looking at people in with wearing watches and aftershave. Who wears aftershave? Do you wear aftershave, Carl? Um, normally, it's, it, aftershave is the sort of thing I let other people buy me. It's like underpants. Underpants, tea towels, and sort of aftershave and that. <laughs> other people buying me. Who's buying you tea towels? My mum. Right, and okay. Every time she turns up, she's got Brilla pads and stuff. I've got <laughs> loads of them. I keep saying to her, I don't need any of this, but she always brings a box full of stuff. Brilla pads, tea towels, underpants. The underpants size hasn't gone up since I was 14. <laughs> But that's, I can rely on her for that. So do you not have anything in your life which you would think of as being gentlemanly? Do you ever dress smartly? What about suits? I bought one suit that time when you invited me to the BAFTAs. That's the only suit. I think I wore it for one other thing. I haven't wore it since. I don't like, I don't feel comfortable, it's not me. But don't you go to a wedding? That'd be a lovely advert, wouldn't it? Him with a suit on going, I haven't wore it since. <laughs> Carl Pilkington hasn't wore it since. <laughs> I don't go to, be to a wedding. No, I don't like going to them. I agree. I mean, even though you know them, they don't give you any time when you're there, do they? It's just sort of, they don't know whether you're there or not. They're on cloud nine. They don't know who's around. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you don't need it's to all, be there. With them, on a wedding day, it's all me, 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 isn't it? Well, firstly, I'm annoyed about the wedding list. I don't know when that's coming on, because I don't know why I can't just bring maybe something I've made at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why has there got to be a list of stuff? What bride, what newly married bride doesn't want a pair of homemade clogs? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I, well, but the saying that, I think people very much appreciate you being at their wedding. No, I don't. They do. I, they remember if you were there. No, they don't. They do. They don't. You don't get invited to weddings because you ain't got any mates. No, I have. I've got, I know enough people. Everyone's getting married. But it's, they're always in the middle of nowhere. That, no, that annoys me when people say, come to our wedding. Yeah, fine, we're, we're in Greece. Yeah. Well, the thing that drives me insane when you do go is when they put you on a table with people you don't know. Well, that's I got it. all my mates there and they put, what, well, because uh, I got a mingle with some people. I don't care, I don't need these people. But that's what people. I'm not good at, I talking to people friends. once. Talking to people who you don't know. No. Well, what sort of stuff would you make conversation about at a wedding? Uh, I'd probably say, oh, first of all, how do you know them? Mm. How do you know the people getting married? Yeah. And then, like, you know, do you think it'll last? <laughs> <laughs> imagine getting... Imagine That's inviting 
Christian's Carl not. Pilkington to it the going. Where should we put him? Oh, I don't know. Is there a, is there a table for one? Oh, just you'd be on the table with the kids. Imagine being stuck with Carl Pilkington at a wedding. Yeah, what else? So you've asked them to think it'll last. They've gone. I'm sorry. Who are you? Oh, Carl Pilkington from Manchester. Right. Yes, we think it'll last. What else would you ask? So what was your next? Um. The, the last wedding I went to, it's going back a couple of years, but everyone seems a bit snidey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because you've got a mixture of families there, haven't you? Yeah. And none of them really like each other. No. And I got stuck with an old fellow who had a flatulence problem. <laughs> That's so <laughs> And then he went on to say, it doesn't matter, the suit's hired. <laughs> and it's just kind of... <laughs> I'm going to die! <laughs> I, I just don't that. like him. I love that he's basically saying at a wedding, it doesn't matter if I shit myself. <laughs> Maybe it's that thing that I don't appreciate what I've got. But to me, being English isn't anything that great. Really? Why not? Because, uh, it's just what I've been dealt with. If you could be any nationality, what would you be and why? Um, probably be Italian. Okay, why? Well, just, uh,. Yeah, I like the idea of it. I like it. Italians are all right. Where would you live? Rome? Probably, I probably wouldn't want to be in, in the middle of Rome. It's too much hassle. Have you been to Rome? Yeah, it's nice to visit and stuff. Yeah. It's good. A lot of old stuff. Why yeah. have you chosen Italy? I'm interested to know why of all the countries you've chosen Italy. I was a late comer to pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one year round. I like it now. It's like one of my favourite things I have. Um, which there isn't really anything like that in England. That even though well, it's... Well, except pasta. Pasta's not exactly like it. Yeah, no, but we it's got, not. We've got pasta. It's we? not ours, though, is it? And we no, don't know how to eat it. What do you mean we don't know how to eat we, it? We do it all wrong. You stick, it, you stick look, it up your arse again. Look at me. I know how to fucking eat it. No, but what I mean is, if, if you saw a proper Italian and they saw what we did to pasta, they would not be happy. What are we doing wrong? Tell me what we're doing wrong. Well, I don't pasta. know that, otherwise, we wouldn't be doing well, it wrong. Well, how do you know, know they, we're doing it wrong? You know I've just heard too. we do it wrong. It's like how we we have the coffee at all the wrong times. I ordered a cappuccino somewhere, and the Italian fellow said, You shouldn't be having that now. It's a breakfast coffee. Yeah, it is, yeah. Before 12 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, but I was having it at like quarter to 11 at night. Oh, it looks wow. Like well, that's absurd. How are you going to get to sleep with a lovely cup of coffee? Yeah, that's, that's well, not Well, I don't point. sleep anyway. You yeah. shouldn't drink coffee anyway at night. Full stop. So, hang on. So, you love pasta, but you're not eating it right. So, you'd like to be Italian in order to be able to eat pasta correctly. Even though you enjoy the pasta, you what eat. do you feel being Italian uh, is, and what what's it's attracted just, it's to being? It's just very sort of uh, it's a relaxed lifestyle. Whenever you go to Italy, everyone sits outside a cafe. It doesn't matter what sort of person Carl, you are. That's all you do now with your spare time is yes, sit outside a cafe. But they get more respect over there. For Why? It. It's it's like it's okay to do that. There's older people sat outside cafes who do nothing. I and love it's just the fact that he wants to be retired. Italian so he can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than he does now sit outside a cafe. No, but everyone's rushing about here. People have, like, colder coffee. They have frappuccinos here because they haven't got time to have a hot coffee. It's like they've got a coffee with ice in so I can neck it. Get down <laughs> my neck and get on with my day. Relax, enjoy your coffee. I don't understand the rush. But the reason you enjoy Italy is because when you were there, you're on holiday. That's why you're able to chill out and no, relax. No. When you say it's old people, old people sat in some little Sicilian village. Of course, they they got no money. <laughs> Here, I went to the Salvation Army. Right. Why? Because it's nice. What do you mean? You get you get you can get toast and a cup of tea for a pound. Go, <laughs> oh, you little skinflint. That's just that. That should be the going rate, Steve. I'm surprised I haven't seen you in there, to be honest. <laughs> but the thing is, where is now, it? Now, just near Camden. What is it? Is it like uh, old people? A lot of old people, mainly old people. Um, and this is what I'm saying. These are people who are old and they sat in a cafe, but they don't get any respect. People are walking past and they don't want to go in. The way you reacted when I said I was in the Salvation Army. That's the reaction they get. Yet an old Italian person, they looked after better. Well, it's certainly true they look after their older families, don't right. they? Do and that's all I'm family. saying, whereas... I mean, it's a lovely place, Salvation Army. Every old fella in there's got a tie on. Yeah. They make an effort. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what I like about Italians and that. There's a, there's a lot of So you respect. want to be Italian because when you're old, you can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than you do here. Yeah, look at the old people in this country. They never look happy, do they, really? Most of the time, when you see them walking around, they, get, they go to pot. No-one's keeping an eye on them. Well, it's an important thing, isn't it, that, that um, my uh, my mum, this is when she was about 
60, 65. Uh, there was a, a neighbour who was uh, uh, like, you know, 85, 90. And my mum used to go on there every day. Do you want any shopping? Do it, right? But I remember calling her once and uh, she'd come back. I said, what are you doing? She went, oh, I've been around so and so. So I went, all right. She went, oh. She won't die, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's out for you, yeah, but she's yeah, thinking yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> <was like>, <laughs> well, that's the problem, you know. If you if you get pally with an old person, yeah. Yeah, and you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is it? You, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start um, popping in his sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do if you're... It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop, as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? Jesus. Just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> you you could just hear her coming. <laughs> just, which was weird. Aren't you? Now you've brought up weird people. There was Go a on. fella called Shorts, man. Right? <laughs> Shortest man wore some shorts. Now, now, what I like, yeah, he did, but they were they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know, like shorts now for blokes. Yeah. They go up to your knees, don't they? There's no chance. There's no accident happening there. There's go nothing going to pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with with big strides to sort of help the chance along. So that he what? knew was the big strides and the short shorts. Yeah. They were going to pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why Everyone did you get the shorts? Just because it was it was like it was but like it was like playing buckaroo. But it was like when are they going to pop out? But what? <laughs> <laughs> it just what happened. So wh right, but so shorts man. <laughs> So he was an exhibitionist. He liked he obviously wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah, and they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan. Right? <laughs> now the thing is, what what we like in England, I think we like that. We like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah. yeah. Eccentrics. Very. That's very British. Eccentrics. Yeah. And, and yeah. I and I I'm glad I grew up round there with all them people. So they're am interesting. I. <laughs> Do you think there's a big difference, Carl, between the, the Englishman of year, yesteryear who didn't complain? I mean, he just got on with things. He might have whinged about the weather and the like, um, but he just got on with things. He you carried know? an umbrella. Yeah. He Whereas nowadays, about anything. people are getting their Prozac and their antidepressants. Someone, if someone into therapy. Yeah. He kept out of stuff as well. Why are we getting involved now in everything? Thoughts on that, Carl? Uh, it's news now, isn't it? Sometimes I think, don't tell me, don't want to know. Just get on with it. Whoever's job that is, get on with it. Yeah. Why am I being told about it? When I've got a problem in my job, no one else knows. No, no. one helps me out and goes, well, I've got an opinion for him. No. This might help him. No one helps me. But I'm being bombarded by everyone else's hassle. They love talking, actually. That's what the English do. Talking, but they never finalise it. They love just being in the meeting room, talking, saying, yeah, we could do this, we could do that. I'm the only one in that room not getting paid. Everyone else is on a wage. <laughs> I'm there looking at me watch, thinking, right, I've been here for an hour and nothing's been sorted. <laughs> They're looking, thinking we can drag this out for another half hour, gets to lunch. That's what annoys me. They're all sat there, just pushing bullshit around the room like dung beetles. <laughs> I'm sick of it. And that's what the English do. <laughs> and it's a shame, because I don't think we used to be like that. I wish everybody just sort of kept to themselves more. Like, you know, certain animals do. They just get on with it. It's like, like an old-fashioned way. What animals keep well, any, themselves? Well, any animals keep themselves themselves. Like what? I've said uh, loads of things. What, what, keeps, what animals keep themselves? Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep themselves? Just, no, they just... Uh, when, whenever you see them just sort of wandering about a roadside, they're on their own. Right. They're, not, they're not sort of... What are they doing? In pairs. I don't know. Most of the time, they're dead. <laughs> I've seen more dead badgers than alive ones. I've never seen a live badger. <laughs> I don't so know what his point is. So that's was. why they're one alone and two getting on with it. I love it. Most I of the time. It started off as some kind of poetic analogy. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Most of the time. I just. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Um, I like this thing of the, the, the Englishman I knew growing up um, was uh, you had to. When you hit a certain age, when you hit like manhood or puberty or whatever, 13, 14, 15, you had to start showing your metal. You had to be tough. I'm, I remember, right, when I first started going to pubs, 
right? So I'm, I don't know, say 18. You walk into a toilet, the urinals, and the first thing everyone did was fart and gob. <laughs> yeah. That was it, right? Yeah, if yeah. you couldn't do that, then, uh, you know, you get funny looks. You know, you go in the rhino and they'd look at you and go, oh, sorry. It was all about um, being a man, you know. I think wearing glasses makes you slightly exempt from that. It's like you don't have to... People mm. automatically dissociate. It's like if I was in prison, I wouldn't have to do that because I'd just be the professor. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Exactly, or brains. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, they would, I wouldn't need to, to be part the... of it. I'm never a threat because I never look like I'm going to be a tough guy. So consequently, I live in this sort of parallel stratosphere where I haven't got a piss and gob. Yeah. Has that got more popular? Yes. Has it? Yeah. There's a lot of women doing it in the streets now. Really? It's not like in, avoiding... Not in Hampstead. It still is, you know. When I walk, walk The only here. person gobbing in Hampstead is me. Jane says, don't gob. People are looking. Well, it is. It's your trail that I'm seeing then. <laughs> it's like a load of sort of washed up jellyfish in London. Just big blobs of it. I, d I mean, I don't know how they're coughing this stuff up. I mean, they shouldn't still be alive. Some of them have, like, organs in them. It's just big lumps of stuff. I mean, that list of idyllic, antiquated England of, uh, you know, tea and cakes and cricket, I mean, is, is valid. But I think the things that sum up Englishness, I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war... We love a ruck. Yeah. We've built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. Talking of the um, English sense of fair play and war, when um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick. And uh, versus our, our bowman. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh, it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage? That's honour, isn't it? But uh, what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got, you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. Someone comes along and goes, don't worry about that. Here's a crossbow. Just pop it in, put it back. <laughs> Deadly. Deadly, quick, anyone can use it. So now you've got... Anyone with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. But we did we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's, that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having, a, having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was, like, sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family, that's, that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. Your new bow and arrow from Ronco. But what, what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I objective don't, I don't is to kill the place. enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all up to about someone cheating or having a better Ooh. system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. But it's just about rules, isn't it? No, not in a war. There isn't rules. What's extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, and that's the one they had a, had a knockabout, so didn't they? It's a, a game of football. In no man's land, yeah. Christmas Day. But he, he took a football there. <laughs> <laughs> If I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Which rules would you repeal that already exist, that you don't like? Uh. It's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> <laughs> so fly tipping, you'd like to see more fly tipping. What, what, what do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house. 
and just like you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was it was a good way of recycling. Now they say recycle, but we're not recycling. It's just being put in a bin. I'm saying if you've got old furniture, you should be allowed to leave it outside your house without the council going move that. It's dangerous. Someone's going to trip over it. Mm. Well, if they right. trip over it, it should have been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? Huh? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over and smack their face in. No, because I'm I'm leaving it. I'm not leaving it on the on the pavement. What you just said you were. Where are you leaving it? Sort of outside the house. Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind teeth. person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything. Definitely not. They're they're better on the feet than some people because they're more cautious, aren't they? So It'd make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second-hand shop or because send they won't, it to they a don't charity? Come, Steve. They Honestly, will. they don't. They I've will. I've called up people and they're saying, "Yeah, we'll be there in an hour." And I say, "Right, I'm going to put it out on the street." And are you going to come and get it? Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. Suddenly, the council goes the past. <laughs> on the floor, bloody noses. And the council said, "I call them up. Do you want to shift it?" Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You'll have to stay with it. Suddenly, I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? <laughs> what? Do you make of St. George, the patron saint? What's your take on that? Is he the one who killed the dragon? Right. Tell us the story. It was a dragon problem. Where? Um, must have been in England. Right. Um, George took it on. He took on the job. He was like a renter kill. <laughs> uh, he came out. The interesting thing with him is, right... He was a hero then. I honestly think if he did that now, there'd be an uproar. Because it's the last it's the last dragon. It's the same way we try to save the panda and all that now. If he came out and said, I've done it, and he's done them what? They've just killed the last dragon. They'd, they'd go mental. There'd be marches. <laughs> idiot, bloody idiot. <laughs> and that's what's interesting. But it was it was going around burning people. Doesn't matter, we shouldn't we shouldn't have killed the last one. It's the last one. And that's no, what we'd be they, like. They, you say you should have saved it, you should have captured it and put it in a cage so we can all look at it. There's no stuff. point, you couldn't have bred anyway, it was the last one. Was it definitely the last one? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were saying it was the last one, I'm not bothered either way. Whoa, hang on, what? To Sorry, me, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you think that there were dragons? Well, what are we celebrating then? Well, it could be a metaphor, a dragon slayer. It could be. Um, a, a bad thing amongst us. It could be a foreign threat. It could well, be things that threaten. Our, it could be anything. It could. It's not. It's not to be taken literally, is but it? But the real legend of George was that he was a figure who uh, stood up for Christianity. Doesn't Have you ever done anything brave? There was a kid at school who used to have epileptic fits a lot, and uh, the teacher used to always say, "If it happens, grab his tongue." And I sort of had a go at that one. His tongue. His tongue. Yeah. What, it was, what, what, what did he have a tongue for? To pick stuff up? What do you mean, a tongue? His tongue in his mouth. Oh, his tongue. Oh, his tongue. Yeah. Right, go on. And they used to say, if he, if, he starts, if he starts doing it, uh, grab his tongue and that. Mm. And, and I sort of had a go at that once. And it was, wasn't nice. What, how did you grab it? Well, you grab his tongue, did you? Well, I tried to. It's like grabbing a slug. <laughs> and plus his mouth's going up and down. Like, you think he's going to have me handy? So you sort of do that thing where you go... So you were, fight, you were trying to grab hold of a kid's tongue, yeah? And he was... He was throwing himself all, all over the place. It was in a physics lesson. I sort of had a go, and then I thought, this isn't happening. So I just sort of kept putting my hand in like I'm having a go. But I, I, in the head, I was going, I'm not going to get hold of it. What you could have used is a pair of tongs. Well, firstly, I don't see why this is brave. Uh, kids having an athletic, athletic fit and you're just supposed to help them out. I don't know why that's bravery, but even given that... The fact that you were thinking more about yourself in that situation than this other kid. You were thinking, I'll make it look like I'm helping, but I'm not really. And yet this is kid having well, a Well, I did, I did at the beginning. Doesn't I that tried. sum you up, Carl? Selfish. No, no, it doesn't. Because at the, at, I didn't, no one else was having a go. At least I did try and grab it you at one point. You weren't doing anything. You were just making it look like you were. It's, have you ever tried to grab a tongue? <laughs> it's <laughs> like chasing a tongue. chicken. <laughs> it's murder. And after a while, it wears you out. And it was weird anyway, because it, it was like... I, a I, what was he doing it for? I don't know. Like, Where are you after hours of chasing love, this kid's tongue? I love the idea of you ever tried grabbing a tongue. 
It's a, it's a valid question. I love that he's annoyed. He's annoyed that this what were you, kid's what was your technique. Were you trying to grab it? Just, sort of like just with your thumb and your what's it thing? Like, like, a, like a pincher thing. Yeah. But it was because his mouth's going down and. What's and he, like, is he shouting or just? No, just throwing himself around. So that's your one attempt at bravery. Well, hang on a minute. Let me just think. It's trying to grab else. a tongue. There was a time you were chased by a bee and you scored a goal. I forgot that, about that. That, that. that isn't really brave, is it? As you, were, as you were running away from a bee and the ball happened to hit your foot and go in. That kind of bravery. I love it when he goes up to the pearly gates and goes, like, well, you know, if you don't need the courage. Uh, I pretended to grab a tongue. <laughs> a what? A tongue. A tongue, yeah. Uh, got chased by a bee, scored a goal. It doesn't count as brave at all.